So Big Bay will win or bad Cincinnati loss? Let's talk about it. This is Locked on Baylor. You are Locked on Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked on Baylor, brought to you by Prize Picks. Thank you for making it your first listen today and every day. Happy Monday to you. I'm Cam Stewart. A victory Monday for both the Bears and the Patriots. So I'm awfully chipper today uh, and want to talk about the Baylor one. I actually really want to talk about the Patriots one, but you're listening to Locked on Baylor. So we're going to have to talk about the Baylor one. And I was surprised in the comments for the post game and, and even the tweets throughout the game that so many Baylor fans are just not enjoying this, enjoying this victory. There's no tanking in college football. There's nothing that would serve you well by just continuing to lose out. Even if you want the head coach gone, he'll be gone if they go to four and eight. So like you have some room to work guys. You just be happy about this. I'm going to address that later point, that point kind of later on in the show, whether this was a good win or just a bad Cincinnati loss. It's five in a row for Cincinnati. So look, they're, they're not a great football team over there, but neither are you and you got to win and you got some real positives out of this. And of course, most of it comes on the offensive side of the football. And that's what I really want to focus on today because we heard about it through the week or the two weeks because of coming off the bye. Uh, but you know, Mac Rhodes going into Dave Miranda's office saying things need to change. And then we hear Dave on Monday saying things are going to change. And, and here's some of them, you know, we're, we're going to run the football less. We're going to go away from the identity or what you thought was the identity, what you thought they built the team around. And, and clearly that was not working. So Montebeno, Benissimo, that's a good sign. Um, and even I, I talked about it in the post game, but they didn't run the ball until 24 minutes into the game, like a straight handoff. Uh, and at that point, like what what would you have been complaining about? I think at that point it was already 20 to 14 or 17 to seven. So you're in control of the game. That that was not hurting you. And and you know if we had handed it off to Richard Reese or Don Richardson or done a handoff at a jet sweep, and we're looking at third and eleven, like has been happening so much this year guys would have been crucifying them for it. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And yes, they were facing a bad defense. Cincinnati is a dreadful defense, actually, especially in the passing game. you got two weeks to prepare for it. Uh, they are the worst, actually, according to PFF, the worst graded coverage team in the nation. Um, so that's bad. That's bad. Um, they had a safety who was their leading tackler on Saturday with 11 tackles. So that's not a great sign, uh, but you made the most of it. And Blake Shapin was in control once again. Um, he he missed some slants, uh, missed some gimmies early on in the game, but I think overall he was excellent in this game. And part of the reason why was he started going to Keytron Jackson, who has shown some flashes this year, and he came up big. And, and they talk about it after the game. I'm going to toss it to Blake and Keytron about just kind of what was working offensively today, especially between those two. Did you see do anything you didn't expect them to do on defense? Um, <clears throat> no, not really. They kind of showed everything that we saw on film all week. Um, they're more a one high structure team defense, and um, we got into, we got into, you know more second and longs and third and longs than we probably wanted to, but they they showed you know the same thing we saw all week. They would go Tampa and and they gave us a lot of that and a little bit of two man. So it's kind of the same thing we saw all week. A few big big long catches there. What was working well and what's your connection with Blake been like? Uh, How's that been? Oh, it's been growing good. We just made an emphasis, like me and him, really like the whole offense, but we made an emphasis to like get those explosive plays. Like that was Coach Running. That's what he was preaching, like make explosive plays. And me and Blake talked before the play, and like we knew what was coming up. And if I got freed, then he was going to let the ball go. But I mean, we were just, we were just on the same page today, pretty much. Keep on that play, I guess it was to start the second quarter where you went up maybe even over the guy. Can you talk about that catch and just uh, how you were able to bring it down? Just <laughs> yeah, but now nah, I just just keep my eyes on the ball, like because I had saw it and it was like you talking about the one that I had to it come was back. A bit, it was a little bit short, 
Yeah. yeah. I, just, I was just trying to keep my eyes on the ball because he told me he was throwing the ball. So I was like, okay, I got to just make the catch. <laughs> so when it bumped, I just was like, just kept my eyes on it pretty much. Blake, you must have a lot of confidence in him because you throw it to him quite a bit when he keeps the choice. Yeah. Uh, no, so like before that play, I was like, look, bro, like <laughs> right here, I'm, I'm coming to you, like no matter what. And so. Um, it really wasn't – I don't even think it was really the look we really wanted. That's mm-hmm. why I kind of hesitated and it was late getting up. But I was like – mid-drop, I was like, all right, yeah, I told him I was going to him, going to him. So – and I knew he was going to go up and make a play. So, I mean, he's a special player. He's a playmaker. And, and you know, that's going to – a lot more of that is going to come in the future. So, Yeah, I mean, you hear the confidence there from both guys. But especially from Blake, I mean, indirectly through Keytron saying, Blake's telling me I'm going to give him the ball. No matter what, you know, you're our playmaker. We're going to find you. And it clearly hasn't worked much this year. I don't know how much it's going to work the rest of the season. But on Saturday, it worked. It worked. 130 yards through the air for Keytron. And he only gets five catches on 11 targets, which, honestly, I am okay with. I'm okay with when you're succeeding in the other facets of the offense, of course. When you're able to find your tight ends down the field, and you're able to get uh, space for Monterey Baldwin, I don't care if you're completing half your targets to Keytron Jackson. I mean, to a certain extent, he is your X guy on the outside. Like, he is supposed to be in, you know, battle situations, if you will, when the ball's in the air, bad ball catcher. Um, Like, he's supposed to be a guy where you're like, oh, he's not 100% open, but he can make a play. That's not to say force it into double-triple coverage, but he should be the guy with the most contested catches. And he was excellent in that category on Saturday, mainly that first play of the second quarter where it's a deep throw to him on a deep post. And he's got a guy all over him. Uh, Blake actually puts it in a good spot. And Keytron goes up, gets his hands up first. He is able to get a deflection on it, keep the concentration and catch it. It's going down to the ground. That is your number one receiver. That's why you brought him here. And that is why (laughs) your quarterback has a ton of confidence in him. And in turn, you heard Keytron say it in that answer there. He has a ton of confidence in his quarterback. We we said this after the UCF game, and that as bad as the Tech game was, this part was still true. These guys really do rally around Blake. They they trust him as their quarterback for again for all the crap he took all off season. And, you know, I don't think that doesn't thank his receivers too much during the game that we could see. Um, and if that matters to you, Patty, um, but he he has a, a wide receiver room that rallies around him and tight ends that rally around him and a line that rallies around him. And that was so evident in that UCF game and has been evident in the ups and downs in the two games since. So hopefully that's what will translate uh, for the rest of this season. And honestly, the difference in this game, because both teams were pretty poor defensively, was special teams. And I'm going to talk a little bit about special teams in a minute. And it really goes well uh, with our first sponsor of today's video. That is because today's video or today's first sponsor is Athletic Brewing, and they are the game changers and non-alcoholic beer. So we're talking about the game changer of the week, and that is, to me, Isaiah Hankins. Four for four on field goals, all over 40 yards, and the difference in the game is three points, including that one drive in the first quarter where he bails you out. I think it was the first score of the game, actually, um, where you got the ball in field goal range, went negative um, on three straight plays, and we're still kind of barely in field goal range, and he just bangs in a 54-yarder for the win. So he is the game changer in today's or in this week's Baylor win, and that's why Athletic Brewing Company is the game changer in non-alcoholic beers because they make non-alcoholic beers that actually taste good. Ton of flavor, well-crafted. It just tastes like a regular beer. They're great tasting, they're award-winning, and they beat out some of those full-strength beers in, in the competitions. And they brew over 50 styles of it. So whatever you're looking for, they've got it. IPAs, golden, sours, all that kind of stuff. And they're always releasing these limited edition ones that I love to try and, and that you can find in your stores and online. They're fit for all times, for being at the game, watching the game at home, in the car on the way to the game. All is great stuff because it's great tasting and no hangover. So for a guy, when you get to my age, that's the thing you love to hear. Great tasting, 
no hangovers. That's about all you need. You can find them in a store near you or buy online at athleticbrewing.com. First time customers can use code locked on to get 15% off your first online order. That's code locked on, L O C K E D O N, at checkout for 15% off at athleticbrewing.com. Near beer, excluding and con- exclusions and conditions do apply. Athletic Brewing Company, fit for all times. So special teams was a big benefit for Baylor this week, as was the passing game, as was the running game at times. But the big improvement for me, what was I literally banging my head on the microphone for in the tech post game was kind of everything, but mostly the offensive line. It was brutal. It was horrendous in that game against tech gave Blake no time to throw, no chance to establish the run just causing all kind of chaos. And one of the things I was worried about coming into this game against Cincinnati was Cincinnati's front. Okay, so the defense is bad, but it's the secondary that's bad. Their their front four are pretty darn good, Um, mainly against the run, to be fair, but there are big boys that I thought could get in the backfield for Baylor, even on passing situations because of what we saw uh, a few weeks ago from the offensive line. Um, Again, the great nickname. The Godfather, Dante Corleone, just a massive, massive nose tackle. He's going to be, he's going to be playing on Sundays next year. He was graded as one of the top defensive players in the country last year overall. Not just at nose tackle, not just on defensive line. Like the havoc he creates is serious. And Baylor really neutralized him, um, and they were able to run the ball up the middle between the tackles in the second half. You know, they didn't, they didn't absolutely gash them, but they were able to run the ball. Uh, in that second half especially. But this offensive line was huge, and it was reshuffled again for the Bears. That was one of the things that I did complain about after that Tech game. It was like, well, what do you have? You know, you've already reshuffled the line, and and it still doesn't work. So what what is the next step? And it's something that Mac talked about. Um, Mac Rhodes, with him going into Dave Aranda's offense, or office, excuse me, talking about the offense, one of the things he said was, I just don't know that we're utilizing our personnel well enough. And that was a a damning thing because I think it kind of started the conversation this week of, are they not using the personnel well enough or do they not have the personnel? And I know there's been some backs and forth from, from uh, national people and and some statewide people talking about how, you know, the personnel isn't good enough. I I know my, my, my man, Travis Roeder this week was talking about it on Twitter. I think he's the best Baylor football analyst out there saying, Nope, that's not the problem. And I happen to agree with him. I I don't think that's necessarily the problem. And the scheme and the mismatching and the effort have been the big problems this year in my mind. You do have some young guys on the team. That's mainly on the back end of your defense. Um, You have some new guys on the offensive line, but they are guys who have played before, um, including the Barrington brothers. Obviously, those those are the big ones. Um, So Dave did talk about them after the game. Actually, uh, Blake Shapin and Dave Aranda talked about that offensive line after the game and just how big a difference it was, the night and day difference between Texas Tech and against Cincinnati. Yeah, Colton played amazing. Um, His poise and confidence was was awesome to see. Um, This was his first start, really first time really playing in a a game. So um, just to see his poise and his confidence was was fun to watch. And and the rest of the line, they played they played a great game, too. And so you know, it was really fun to uh, to watch those guys, and you know, I felt clean most of the game. So, I think it starts with Clark Barrington. So Clark is really one. You know, Clark is a uh, leader. Clark is is way mature, um, very uh, considerate person, and you know, family dude, and all that kind of off the field. On the field is like way nasty, and um, you know, plays at the edge of edge. And um, I think that's been a somewhat compromised and somewhat um, probably held back from being center. You know, I think Clark, you know, when he's in the center role, he was kind of the dad. And I think the guard allows him to be the big brother. And I think it's just way difference. And uh, there's some nasty nastiness that came out today. It is way, way cool to see. I think we need it, you know, and then, um, that also allowed just Colton Price. So Colton really played well in his first start and everything. And Colton is is um, a bit of a mudslinger too. And so he plays right on the edge of all of it. And those two guys together, um, 
you know, they play tough. And, um, you know, in this, going into halftime, I, we didn't really attempt a bunch of runs uh, purposefully. And, um, you know, they were asking to run the ball. And so, I, you know, it was coming from those two. And so to come out in the second half and run it some um, was, uh, was cool to see. Positive stuff. I mean, shout outs going all the way around. Guys mentioned by name. Um, I just got to say the the uh, the work of the Barrington brothers was was just more palpable uh, this game. And that's something that Dave talked about before the season was that these guys were were going to be the guys. They were going to be the leaders of the defense, um, especially uh, Campbell. And they they both played much better. And I loved hearing those things that Dave had to say. You know, it 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 carries a lot more weight when it comes after a win. He's basically saying that, you know, we knew these guys had it in them and that the Barrington brothers have kind of this nasty streak in a good way and that they're just waiting to let it out. And to me, it reads a lot like the, hey, we're explosive in practice, which by the way, they must be because they had 11 explosive plays on Saturday, seven of them through the air. But obviously we didn't see that before this week, right? And so we're like, yeah, yeah, Dave, we're the best offense or best practice team in the nation. I said it, you know, if we played Georgia in practice, we'd beat the hell out of them. Um, so it didn't carry a lot of weight, but when it comes after a win and it's tangible and you see these guys playing better, that does tend to carry some more weight. And it was just great to see overall. It's one of those things. It's like baseball umpires, right? You don't notice it until it's going really poorly and it was going really poorly. And how about Colton price from Bowie, Texas, Bowie in the boonies, uh, had a big game and you heard both Blake and Dave mentioned him by name. Um, that's a guy who had really not played before. And through the first or second, you know, kind of mismatching of this offensive line, he didn't make the cut. He didn't play. And all of a sudden, after your worst offensive line performance of the season, granted with a bye week to prepare for it, he's in there and starting and getting his first real action and playing really well. Uh, Baylor still does allow two sacks, but they win the sack battle, which they very rarely do because they got three on defense. So, I mean, look, that's that's something you got to take the good with the bad. And there was a lot less bad than good this week. And um, one of the things that really did impress me too about uh, this offensive line was what Dave said about um, them wanting to run the football, right? The offensive line comes in and says, hey, let's, let's run the dang ball. Run the dang ball, Bert. They pulled the full Sandra Bullock. I mean, they didn't basically abduct a kid and and use it and make all of their money off him. But they did do that part. And they said, let's run the dang ball. And it worked perfectly. I mean, truly, they they mixed in the run a lot in the second half in, in good situations. And Dawson Pendergrass had a nice game. Didn't do a ton on the ground, but I thought blocked really well. Um, again, they, they had a lot of explosive plays through the air. They were still outgained um, mightily, <laughs> actually, in the run game, embarrassingly so on the on the defensive side of things. Yeah, 312 to 114 overall on the ground and yards per rush, 2.9 for Baylor, which works when you're passing the ball that well, but it, it's not a very balanced attack overall. I don't know how much you can go to that well against a team with even a better Secondary. I mean, again, this is probably one of the worst secondaries in the nation. Um, and Cincinnati got almost seven yards a rush. That's oof, that's bad. We're going to talk more about that later this week. And this defense has not doesn't get any free passes. They made enough plays to win, but they didn't don't get don't get many free passes out of this one. But yeah, a lot of the explosiveness through the air. They were outgained on the day, uh, 450 to 392. So almost 400 yards of offense. I'll take that. Um, in a Big 12 game on the road for for this team in terms of how we're curbing expectations as well. That's that's what's come. You know, that's that that's the point we're at right now. So I'll take that big time. And um coming up, we're gonna take a look at uh that that argument I was mentioning before. Was this a bad Baylor win? Is there even such a thing at this point in the season? But first, I got to tell you that today's episode is also brought to you by Prize Picks, the number one daily fantasy sports game in the U.S. It's still a ton of fun for me to do. Obviously, we're in the midst of a football season, both at the college level and in the NFL, and we've got the playoffs going on, ALCS. 
may or may not still be going on by the time you listen to this. Uh, but prize picks is simple to play. I can make my picks and I submit my entry in less than 60 seconds. I'm telling you, it's that easy. Quick withdrawals, easy game, easy gameplay, an enormous selection of players and stat types that, that make it easy. You know, I was like, obviously, this is a no brainer. Mac Jones, 300 yards yesterday, two touchdowns yesterday, and I made a ton of money off it. You know, just easy bets like that that you can find every week. And the best part about it is their injury insurance because with the prize picks reboot policy, your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. So for NFL games and those college football games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, that player is rebooted. So prize picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with that injury insurance. So what else do you need, right? You need to go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use the code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash locked on college. And then use the code locked on college, L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E. Prize picks, America's number one daily fantasy sports game. So the question was this a good Baylor win? or a bad Cincinnati loss. My question, por que no los dos? Why can't it be both? And mainly what I'm trying to say is, at this point in the season, actually, you know what? You guys don't want to hear it from me. Let's hear from Blake Shapin, because I think he makes my point for me. It, meant, it means a lot. Like, that's it's key to, you know, win games in this league, and, and we need to win. And so it was, it's always, you know, awesome to win a football game, especially, you know, in this league where everybody's, you know, kind of similar in a way. So just to be able to, to come out with a win is huge for us, and we need to use that momentum going forward. <laughs> Couldn't have said it any better myself, Blake. It's not easy to win in this conference when you are Baylor this year. Okay, overall, it's not that easy to win in this conference and win on the road against a team you've never played before. Um, yes, Cincinnati's not good, so I'm not saying this is like a big upset victory, but it's a it's a good victory for Baylor. Um, and I just think it's funny that so many people who are talking about going two and ten um, are the ones that are saying you're happy about this victory. Yeah, Baylor won a football game. I'm very happy about that. Okay. These these are not coming very often these days. You can't be you can't be that person who is saying, "Oh, we're never going to win another game. How have we fallen off this fast?" And then not be happy at a victory. You, that sucks. You suck if you're like that. I'm sorry. You're you're not a good fan. Again, this is not the NFL. You're not you you don't root for tanking. I should have rooted for the Patriots to tank yesterday, but I didn't because I care. There's no tanking in college football. I said it in the open. You know, if you go. Two and ten or four and eight. Because because I think I should say this. I think it's because some people are upset or not happy about it because they want Dave Aranda to be fired. Okay, that's an exhausting way to live. It truly is. But my point to you would be if they go two and ten, or if they go four and eight, or if they go five and seven, that's the same. That's the same all the way around. It's not good all the way around. You know, this was a team that was, you know, pretty close to being outside, outside the top 25, um, but between that 30 and 35 range at the beginning of the season. So you didn't have a huge hype around this team, but you expected them to be a bowl team. So when you don't make a bowl game, that to me, and I think to the athletic department, that's just as bad as being 2-10 and 10 and 3-9. and nine. So that said, just freaking enjoy the victory, man. It's exhausting, some of you people. <laughs> yeah, is it a great win? No, but they all count the same. <laughs> it's... It, whether it was a great win or a bad win, that's your third win of the season. And if it was a great win, it would have been your third win of the season. So I just, those kind of people, I just don't understand. So I know that I know that's the minority. I know, but they're commenting on YouTube. They're commenting on Twitter. So I'm seeing it. And I do appreciate you guys listening along and commenting. I, I never want you to stop doing that. But just like, come on, guys. Can we enjoy life a little bit? That was an awesome win uh, to just get a win, you know, for as bad as it was two weeks ago. It's awesome to just get a win. And to close things out, right? I mean, this was a game that Baylor didn't need a huge comeback on. Uh, I said it with seven minutes left when they were up 10. Even if they give up a touchdown here, there's no reason for them to lose this game. And they didn't. You know, they they ate good chunks of the clock. Um, they hit the field goals when they needed to. And the defense made plays. 
The defense did not have a shimmering day overall, but they made enough plays, mainly those two one-on-one pass breakups on third and fourth down on the final Cincinnati drive. That was huge. Um, That was something that Baylor has struggled at the last two seasons, closing out games, right? Um, TCU last year, Utah this year, uh, a couple more examples, West Virginia last year, um, just had a lot of trouble closing out games. And this was finally the opposite. And I didn't know that we would see that from this team this year, but um, defense made enough plays to win. They established the run enough in the second half that they were able to play that complimentary football and get a road victory in the conference. I just don't know how you can complain about that. Obviously some things to work on. They, they got gashed in the running game again. And Dave, Dave said it after the game um, that that was not, we were embarrassed by that. Uh, the run defense, not making any improvements over the two weeks between games. That is very discouraging, but the reason why I'm not totally down on it is because there's, I think really one, maybe two other teams on your schedule that are built like Cincinnati defensively. Um, Although Houston looked pretty good against UT on Saturday. So that's, that's, I think that might be the overarching issue of some of the people who aren't loving this win is that, uh, I, I just, I still don't see bowl eligibility um, because the inconsistency that we've seen from this team and the schedule for the rest of the year, um, I wish we could play every game on the road. <laughs> there is, that would be perfect for this team. And Dave said it after the game too. He was like, yeah, or, or and some of the players did too. They were like, we, we like that. I think it was Brooks Miller who said it. He said, we, we, we like that. We love hearing it from the other fans. You know, we, we need something like that sometimes to get us fired up and, Athletes love that kind of stuff. So can they play all the rest of the games on the road? If they could, I'd feel a lot better. Winning at TCU would feel amazing, but I'm not going to get too ahead of ourselves. We have got the Iowa State Cyclones coming in next week. We're going to take the week to, uh, we'll talk about some other things, but towards the end of the week, we're going to preview Iowa State, and that's a hot team coming in that has two weeks to prepare for you. And I don't think Baylor really, Baylor fans in general don't dislike Iowa State. They hate us, hate us. And it's still the 10th thing, I guess. I don't know. It's really stupid. I like Iowa State. I end up rooting for them in a lot of sports. So I don't I don't really get it, but they hate us. And that should be an interesting matchup. And we'll see if Baylor can capitalize on this road victory. Thank you for making it your first listen today and every day. We're going to have more football going throughout the week. We're going to mix in a little basketball in there again because we're coming up on it and we're going to have a really good team. So sorry about that if you hate it. Uh, But we will have more on the Iowa State preview later in the week and talk about what this win could mean for the rest of the season for the Baylor Bears. Thank you again. This has been, always will be, Locked on Baylor.